What's going on guys, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to continue on our Beyblade project. Dread Labs. Um, so in the last video uh, we briefly discussed that I want to bring this into Photoshop and see if we can add some cool layer styles to this. Uh, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to go and uh, well export this as a PSD file. So let's just grab all of these and scale them up. And the first thing I want to do is organize all of these layers. So Let's just remove this uh, ellipse here, the one that we use as a guide. And let's just ungroup everything uh, for now. And the way this works is if you export this, uh, every layer will be a group in Photoshop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a couple of layers. And here with the bottom rotation, let's just leave them here and lock these in place and then grab everything else and paste them in place in the next layer and here I'm gonna lock in these green layers cut everything up and paste them in place again and repeat this process until you have a layer with every different color alright so now that everything is here let's just unlock all of it again so we can properly select everything and let's just properly rename all of these first all right so now that i think about it looking at the beyblades on my pinterest board i'm going to remove this top shape here and uh, i think this is almost ready to export uh, let's just go and select everything first and then remove the stroke and now we're going to go to file, export, export as. And as you can see, I already tried some stuff out, but let's just go with Photoshop PSD and export this. And I can overwrite my file here. So I want to work in a screen file in Photoshop. So uh, I'm just going to go with the 72 PPI. Um, if you want to do some prints, I would go with high. Um, yeah, there's that. All right, so we're in Photoshop. And as you can see, everything is well almost successfully exported let's just go and see um, how we can fix some of these because the groups in Illustrator will sometimes just also also be groups and it just looks a little bit messy so with this let's just go with the background and I'll lock this up then we have the outer ring one two three All right, so I think we should be good for this. Um, and let's just go and hide all of these. I start with the bottom ones and add a bevel and emboss. Okay, so I'm gonna go with a inner bevel and smooth, uh, lower the depth for a little bit and up the height. And the angle here, I think we should just go with something like 70 or 80. And let's go with a normal gloss contour here and up the size a little bit so there's like shadow everywhere yeah we should lower the depth to like a 100 percent or something and then go with an inner shadow without any distance uh, check off global light and increase the size here go with a normal contour i feel like this style should be good and then Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to convert these into a smart object and we're going to duplicate it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the fill. So this is now an invisible layer, but I'm going to add another bevel and emboss layer. And this time we're going to go and make it a ring uh, contour. Increase the depth for a little bit and size it down a little bit as well and if we show the bottom layer here you can see that there's an extra layer uh well developing i guess so if we go to effects and go to inner glow and let's just see if we have like a darker gray what happens and we put it on multiply actually i want to see what happens if we like experiment with a little bit more of a fun color like purple or something 
Okay, uh, let's go with you. Well, this is a little bit too light, so let's go with overlay maybe. And then... This looks kind of cool. And now we're going to duplicate this one more time. And we're going to go clear the layer style, remove the fill once more. And we're going to go with another inner glow. But this time from the center on. And decrease the size of the choke and add another color. Maybe like something on lines of green. And I actually want to have this on normal so I can see where it's going. So, yeah, once we scale this down, I'm going to go to overlay. It's only in this, this is only happening in the center now. Maybe choke it up a little bit more. Okay, so why I'm doing this is I want to increase a lot of the... I want to have a lot of color variation in my uh, layer styles. And it's simply not possible with just one layer style. So we're just going to go with this. Okay, outer ring 1 is done. Okay, let's go to the second one. And something that I didn't really take into account is I need to copy these layer styles. So let's just duplicate this into my old project so that we can remove these, this one, and So now it's properly aligned, I can just just copy these three layer styles and recolor some of them. Uh, so let's go and copy with this layer style and paste it in. Group this one as outer ring two. By the way guys, um, these layer styles will kind of take a toll on your project file. So um, if you don't have the best computer, I suggest rasterizing these layer styles. And let's just duplicate these two again and copy the other layer styles. Oh, and I like the color that this is emitting. Um, all right, so I'm going to do the same thing with all of these. I'm just going to go and fast forward these so we can just move on to once we're finished with all of these bevel and boss effects. All right, so we're finished up with, um, well, beveling and embossing all of these shapes. And I got to say, it kind of looks cool. It gives me those zero vibes. Um, kind of also, yeah, I don't know. Get some Gucci Maze vibes from this. So let's just go and see if we can create some cool background graphic. And then maybe add some textures and call it a day. So let's just group all of these and call it Beyblade. Uh, what I want to do firstly is actually soften up these edges. So I'm going to go and add a box blur to all of these. Maybe like, maybe five. Let's go with five to make it extra soft. And the reason why I want to soft up these edges is because it's going to look a little bit more crispy once we uh, add a noise layer. And I'm going to do that with a... Uh, quick action that I made in Photoshop it just creates a 50% uh, gray fill with some noise added to it through here. Um, if you want to learn more about Photoshop actions, there's also a video on my tutorial on this one. Um, so yeah, let's just go and set this to overlay, I guess. And this is why I want these like soft edges of the box blur. And what I want to do now is I want to go and duplicate this whole thing and just make it into a smart object. Scale it way up so that the whole background will be covered. Like this. And then go to filter, distort, twirl. And I guess let's just do a small radial blur to 
make the edge or the background a little bit softer and lower the opacity a little bit. And let's just make one more copy of this. And we can just uh, convert this to a smart object as well. Let's call this one Beyblade Background and this one Beyblade Glow. And let's just do a simple Gaussian Blur on this one. Maybe like 50. And go to Use Saturation and add a lot of saturation. Okay, so I guess this kind of looks cool as well. Um, not really, it's not really looking like a Beyblade anymore, but yeah, I really like how this one turned out, actually. Uh, I just put the glow on top of here and added to difference. Um, yeah, let me just see what happens if we just put it to the background here. And I kind of want to mask some stuff out, so what happens if we just add a cloud filter to the mask? Um, okay, and let's just up the contrast on this by adding a threshold into the mask, or maybe like a level, so we can just increase the contrast a little bit more, controlling. Okay, this is a little bit too much. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, we can do it either this way or this way. And I'm gonna let you guys decide. So let me know in the comments which one of these you like more, this one or this one. And I think I prefer to go with this one actually. Um, just because I like how you sometimes accidentally stumble upon some really cool stuff. Um, yeah, but should, yeah, sorry guys, uh, I really like experimenting with these things and I really encourage you to just uh, play around with layer styles, adjustment layers, um, and blend modes basically, uh, to get like an effect that you maybe didn't even know you wanted. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is the end of this uh, two-part video, I guess. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want me to do more uh, videos uh, like this, please let me know in the comments. And uh, you can also join us on Discord. If you have any cool ideas how to improve Dreadlabs, please let me know as well. And I want to take this special time to thank my patrons. Because my pa patrons support me and make me be able to do Dreadlabs, well, full-time, I guess. Uh, and because of this, I am able to uh, create more videos, more tutorials, more guides, more products, more Dreadlabs. And as a patron, you'll also get access to all of these project files that I do in my videos, um, as well as a 15% discount in the Dreadlabs webshop. And on top of that, you also get some cool Discord privileges. So guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.